Let's talk a little bit about what is new and what we can expect in the, in, in the world of heart research coming down the pike. So we're very excited about our new recruit, Dr. Jennifer Van Eyck. She's a proteomics expert, internationally renowned, uh, one of the few people that is going to be making biomarkers uh, very much uh, something that'll be done at a routine level. Your community care provider will uh, take a sample of blood or possibly urine and tell you what the problem is and tell you what the treatment is, sort of a Star Trek approach to life. Um, it'll be particularly important uh, in the Barbara Streisand Women's Heart Center because we know that biomarkers can differ between women and men. Even a simple test like the troponin, which is a biomarker for heart attacks, we recently discovered that the threshold for diagnosing abnormality differs between women and men and that one out of five women have been sent home uh, inappropriately because it was not detected. The, uh, we were not using a female biomarker approach. So we'll look forward to these kinds of breakthroughs, again, to really level the playing field and make sure that women are getting the health care that they need for their heart. Well, let's just take a step back for a second. You mentioned that she was a specialist, and you said this word that went... Proteomics. That's so this is the next frontier. Uh, after mapping the human genome, we now know that DNA transcribes into RNA, which then makes proteins, and proteins are what make the cell do what it's supposed to be doing in health or disease. So proteins, or proteomics, uh, is the very fast approach to looking at what is actually happening in the cell. We know there's a lot of junk DNA. We know there's a lot of quiet or silenced DNA. Uh, and so proteomics is really the way that you know what DNA is being used and it tells you about the health or lack of health of that cell and then ultimately of that person. My final question is about testing women because you you know I've, I've gone to cardiologists and I've done stress tests and I've done EKGs and I've done various things like that. Let's talk a little bit about what women should be looking for when they see somebody like you. Well, again, the standard treadmill test is a male standard. It's called the Bruce Protocol. Guess who developed that? Bruce. <laughs> uh, for Bruce. <laughs> so, and, and many women, unless they're fit athletes, have trouble keeping up with a Bruce Protocol, in part because women naturally have less muscle mass than men because of the differences in hormones, estrogen and testosterone. Testosterone is a muscle builder, so women have less muscles than men just naturally. So uh, women should know that uh, they can uh, request alternative protocols. We have a WISE protocol, which is a modified ASIP, if anybody wants to look that up. Um, women tend to do better also with uh, bicycle protocols, where it can be graded to their own body size and weight and their ability to pedal. Uh, and these kinds of studies are coming out. We've already published a lot in the WISE, but we need to now translate that into community care. I think too often, at least the stress tests that I see uh, for second and, and third opinions are still Bruce Protocol stress tests. So women are still being put on a boy's treadmill. We need to be proactive as women. We need to get the message out and then women need to be their own advocates. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Barry Mers. I really appreciate it. Thanks for this good attention to this important cause.